Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the next edition of Specialized Library Spotlight. Today, we are here with Elizabeth Quinlan, who is the Foundation Librarian at the MacArthur Foundation. Hi, Liz. It's really nice to see you today. How are you? Hey, Debbie. It's great to be with you. This is so exciting to have been invited to the series. I um, you know, couldn't be happier to get to speak um, to librarians about special libraries because you know, it's, it's a real exciting um, area of library work that maybe a lot of people don't know about. That's very or, true. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, we'd love to hear what you have to say. I think one of the things that would be interesting is if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be at the MacArthur Foundation. Sure, sure. So, um, you know, I, I uh, came to libraries, I had originally done a master's in English, so I had a first uh, master's degree and then found my favorite part of uh, teaching in, in, you know, as an English teacher was all the library work and getting the students in libraries doing research. So I thought, hmm, maybe I should go to library school. So I did go to library school a couple of years after that first master's degree, and I went to Ireland. I, I chose to go to library school in Ireland. I really wanted to study, um, you know, kind of the art of librarianship and uh, collection development and preservation and all that kind of stuff with people who've been do doing that for centuries, <laughs> which I found very exciting. Um, and so, you know, I went to library school in Ireland. I came back to Chicago. And I started working at IIT, uh, the Illinois Institute of Technology University here um, in Chicago, um, down by 35th and State is where the main campus is. And I worked in a special research library down there. So I didn't work in the big university library. I was hired to work in one of their research centers called the Center for the Study of Ethics in the Professions. Oh, so wow. we collected a lot about ethics and codes of ethics and you know, um, issues and, and stuff around uh, various professions and how, you know, engineers face ethics problems or architects face ethics problems, psychologists face ethics problems. So that was a really fun niche kind of collection and specialty. And so I was the solo librarian in that very small research center. Um, and so I found I really, really loved the research aspect of the work. And I really loved um, kind of being the single person in a institution or an organization or a center doing library work. So I really hit my niche early on being a solo librarian in a research library, essentially. So about five years into that job, um, the job at MacArthur came open and I applied for it and uh, very happily <laughs> got the job. Um, so I have been a librarian for about 21 years. And uh, I've been at MacArthur this, uh, in October this year, it'll be my 16th year at MacArthur. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah, I, it's been really, really fun. I, I have to say, I um, always say MacArthur has just been such a dream job for me. And my the other thing I like about being a librarian in a special library and in an organization is, you know, the responsibilities have adapted as the needs of the organization have adapted. So I've gotten to kind of stretch myself quite a bit. You know, I've you know, we provide traditional library services, but I'm also, you know, working on K, uh, knowledge management initiatives and all sorts of things. So as the, as the organization kind of evolves and their needs evolve, my skills come into play, you know, as, as that happens. So I, I get to stretch in really, really fun ways. And I'm still a solo librarian um, and I still get to do a lot of research. So that's awesome. Um, it really yeah. is. I, I do think people are a little bit, I should be familiar with what the MacArthur Foundation is, but if you want to give us a sort of a little bit of information on what the foundation does, that would be great. Sure, sure, sure. So MacArthur, uh, we are the large, well, we're one of the largest uh, found private foundations in the country, one of them in Chicago and in Illinois. So we are a nonprofit. Uh, we are a grant making institution. So we make grants to different nonprofit organizations working um, locally, nationally and internationally in all sorts of areas. We uh, fund um, uh, people and organizations working on climate issues, on nuclear security issues, on criminal justice reform. Um, we have a huge commitment to work in Chicago in terms of um, working locally and culture and equity and arts and arts organizations and building civic partnerships here in Chicago. Um, we're known very uh, prominently for our fellows award that we give every year around mm -hmm. at the end of September. So we do some award programs. That's where we fund um, usually around 25 to 30 um, creative individuals, you know, kind of honoring what they, the promise that they show 
giving them unrestricted um, dollars for five years so that they can, you know, kind of move their creativity and their endeavors forward um, kind of in an unrestricted way. It kind of gives them a, a, you know, kind of a financial security to be able to take some risks in their own creative endeavors. So that's pretty exciting. So every year we make um, probably around $270 million in grants. Wow. Um, our, yeah, our endowment right now, I was just looking, is around um, just over $8 billion, which <laughs> blows my mind. <laughs> <laughs> and thankfully, we have wonderful people uh, taking care of that money and investing it wisely so that we can um, keep giving money away for many, many, many years to come. We're a, we're a foundation um, currently in, it, that we're understood to be in, in perpetuity. So we like, would like to go on for many, many years. We've been around wow. um, around 1978, we were founded. So that's amazing. So how does yeah. how does the library specifically support the work that the foundation does? Yeah, so, um, you know, we provide, very, you know, I, I should say I, because I'm a solo librarian, though I will right. say I have, <laughs> I have a part-time assistant who kind of helps me as needed, and we are so happy that she literally just got her library degree a couple years ago, so that was, she's a, a um, she's an assistant within our knowledge management department where the library falls. We have a knowledge management department, we have the library, we actually have an institutional archives, um, and, you know, we kind of help um, with KM initiatives throughout the foundation. Um, so I do have an assist in, in my colleague, Helen Harrison, who um, is just a, a wonder to work with. She helps with you know, cataloging and the book loaning and all that kind of stuff. So um, she really helps lighten the load of, of um, me being you know, the, the sole person on the administrative tasks as well as kind of the uh, more uh, research related tasks. So we do provide, um, you know, services to our staff. Um, so we have about 170 full-time staff, I'd say. Okay. Um, we have most in our Chicago office. Chicago is our home. It has been since we um, were founded. Um, over time, we've had many international offices that have kind of, you know, run their program, uh, programmatic lives and the grant making focus of those offices. We had, you know, we've had one in Brazil, in Russia, um, in Mexico um, City in Mexico. Um, currently, so we have our most of our staff in Chicago, and then we have um, probably about 10 or 15 staff between our office in New Delhi in India and in Abuja in Nigeria. Oh, wow. So we work very closely with our international colleagues, and um, there's a lot of um, um, Chicago staff who also serve on initiatives with those international staff. So, so those are the those are the people that I serve. So my users are pretty much just MacArthur staff. We're not okay. really open the research service or library service to grantees or, or the public. Um, so, you know, at being a special library within an organization, the organization staff it, it are my users. Um, and so we, you know, we do, we have a fairly traditional, uh, uh, you know, library service. We have a bunch of books, <laughs> I'd say. Yeah. Our, in our catalog, we have about, you know, 2000 books um, and fewer and fewer print journals. Obviously, since we've gone through pandemic, we've put a lot of those on hold and I've tried to make those digital where possible. We have a lot of, um, because of the program areas that we worked in, kind of what I was talking about, climate, you know, criminal justice, nuclear, I mean, we have very focused areas that we're interested in, in terms of our current grant making. And so I, I like to build our collection, including our journals around those areas. And so- right you know, we still need to rely on some pretty niche journals that maybe just be, might be available in print. Um, so um, anyway, we have that fairly traditional service. We have books throughout our offices. So we don't really have like when you, if you were to look at the MacArthur Foundation Library, um, it's really peppered throughout our offices when okay. it's, we're talking about the books. So we have um, books in our collection related to the program areas that we fund, mm -hmm. um, uh, including, which is really exciting, you know, we have our fellows programs. We have a lot of um, output from our fellows and they've obviously very creative people. We have like really great some films and, and um, you know, novels, art catalogs, all sorts of, um, you know, creative output from those folks. Um, and so we, so we do have some grant products in that way as well. We also uh, collect uh, material around philanthropy as a sector and trends and issues affecting nonprofits and that might affect our grant making. You know, we just kind of want to be on top of not only philanthropy, which is what we do as, a, right. as grant makers, um, but also what's affecting our entire nonprofit sector. Um, 
so um, that's kind of the subject matter of a lot of uh, our collection. Obviously, it's fairly small because it's very limited, but we do have books throughout the foundation, you know, in different areas. We have a cafe space that's open for our staff, and so we put some library shelves in there. We have um, some breakout rooms and office spaces and we put bookshelves there. So, you know, I, I kind of try and build um, the areas up uh, according to like what people would be interested in. When they're sitting in the cafe, they might be more interested in those things like trends and issues and philanthropy. Right. Um, and, you know, when you're in a meeting space, you might want to look at more grant products. So mm -hmm. it's it's just kind of interesting. Uh, it's, it's, and the very wonderful thing is, you know, it's very, um, we can be really agile and responsive to what people want. You know, I've been building kind of micro collections around justice and equity issues, um, um, all, all sorts of things of interest to our staff and, and um, initiatives that we have going on at MacArthur, so. Do you have to do um, extensive research projects or are there other staff at the foundation that do that type of work or is that fall under you? Yeah, actually um, I, I do quite a bit of research. And that's actually not only my favorite part of my job, I have to say, and kind of my favorite part of being a librarian is just digging into research as, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, I, I like to think of myself a little bit as Nancy Drew in that way, or um, where, you know, I kind of like to dive into the mystery and help, you know, solve the clues and find what yeah. people are looking for. So in many ways, I'm a research partner, so I can help them, uh, you know, I can help because we're a very research oriented organization. Our staff, are very much experts in their field. So I work with a highly educated uh, staff that are, you know, kind of on the cutting edge in many ways on, on these topic areas. Um, so I get to learn a lot from them, but um, I can also help um, guide them and shepherd them um, and help navigate or help build um, some information management tools around their managing their research. Um, I help them maybe with search strategies and different resources to use. Uh, I can procure articles and books as they need. And in many cases, um, over time, we've had different incarnations of, you know, kind of research teams and research focused staff mm -hmm. that I work closely with. Um, but I've also been able to do a lot of, um, you know, kind of in-depth research for staff. And I've done that many times for, you know, um, you know, we have not only our program staff, our grant making, you know, in the grant making areas, but we also have like an investments team, we have a legal team, okay. we have finance, we have an HR department. So I, I serve all of those folks. And okay. so I might be asked by our investments team to dig into some area of investments that they're interested in building up or thinking about, or so it could be exploratory research, or it could be diving into, you know, kind of stuff that we're already um, working on. So it's really kind of a hodgepodge. I'm kind of a jack of all trades when it comes to research. I can help shepherd it. Um, I can do the research. Right. I can work with people in their research. So yeah, I'm kind of, that's one of my favorite parts of the job is being. I, I, I have to say that I think that sounds like fun too. <laughs> oh, I, I just love it. I love it. It, it, just, it gets me excited. And also I just never know what people are going to ask for. You know, that's right. the thing. People are interested in anything and they, mm -hmm are always, you know, that people want to stay on top of, of trends that are affecting everything and yeah. affecting our sector, affecting our, it, affecting our program areas. So, you know, the questions could come up about anything and it's right. one of the joys of my job. This must feel sort of like a, a new job almost like every year and, and so you don't get bored. That's it. I mean, I feel like my job now looks very different from the one I was hired to do in, in the best kind of way. And I, I've also helped kind of, you know, I've taken the lead on some of our knowledge management initiatives, for, by the way, um, you know, uh, I've kind of been driving uh, the effort to create an enterprise taxonomy, um, which has been really exciting. Um, you know, there, we have a bunch of different departments on our, uh, on our staff that have kind of worked with various um, incarnations of controlled vocabularies for their content. Yeah. But you know, we're trying to think about it from an enterprise and an institutional perspective. We need to kind of corral all these controlled vocabularies and see how that can affect how we how we internally catalog our materials. Mm -hmm. I'm also the content lead on our intranet. So I, I'm working closely with staff and building out the taxonomy for our intranet and helping staff learn about what taxonomy is, how to use it when they're posting content on, on our intranet. So, you know, that's all been fairly new, I'd say, in the last couple of years. Uh, right. Well, I mean, time stopped, what, two years ago, but let's <laughs> say maybe the last four or five years. So we've okay. been working on that. 
Wow. Well, you've yeah. definitely made the library a, a vital part of the foundation, which is which is great. I mean, that's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So one of the reasons we do these videos is because people don't necessarily know what a specialized library is and why they're important. You've been doing this for a while. Why do you think specialized libraries are important and relevant? Well, I really think that, um, you know, librarians come into an organization um, with a set of skills that I think as, as you work longer and deeper in an organization, um, the organization can learn how you can bring those skills to bear on many different um, areas of work. Um, I don't know um, that, you know, people sometimes might not even realize that librarian skills are, can be a, a, as adaptable as they are. Right. Um, I feel like um, librarians, and for myself in my role, I really feel like I am a, I kind of think of myself as an information shepherd in many ways. Like I can help curate and provide and train and kind of um, guide staff through the world of resources that's available to them. I mean, I basically swim in this pool every day. And I actually was talking with a colleague not long ago who I was doing a library orientation with. I do an orientation about library services to all new staff and interns. And I was like, you know, no question is too simple. Don't ever, you know, be shy asking me anything. I said, I swim in this pool every day. And I came up with this and I said, you know, I'm, I'm here to tell you the water's warm, jump in or I can, I can help in any way. Um, but however, you know, I can help make you feel more comfortable and help kind of curate and shepherd the, the information work that you and information needs that you find that you have in your work. I really feel like that helps save time of staff within an organization sure. because it really, especially in our case, you know, we have a lot of program officers and they, they need to be making grants. That's what they're good at. Um, and interacting with grantees and interacting with the field and interacting with, you know, people of every level that affect that work. And that's what they're at MacArthur to do. And what I feel myself as a librarian, I can help save time for them, you know. Absolutely. They don't need to go dive in and do all this research. They can say, hey, Liz, can I, you know, I can help share the burden of that work and, right. and ease time on them so that everyone kind of gets to be their own expert mm -hmm. in their own role. Well, there's um, definitely a model there that can be used at other types of libraries too successfully. I mean, there are yeah. obviously libraries that are already doing it, but but though that there are libraries that aren't. So it's definitely something to look at, maybe doing more specialization to support the users. So something yeah. to consider, you know. Thank well, you. Thank you totally so agree. much, Liz. It was so great chatting with you and seeing you again and hearing about your experiences. So thank you. And we uh, are so glad you could join us today. Well, thank you, Debbie. This has just been really a lot of fun. I find it wonderful to get to reflect on, you know, my role and thinking about how it's relevant across all types of libraries. I think, you know, we, we're all in, in the same business in a way, and we just kind of... Um, exhibit our skills in different ways in, in different scenarios. So the more we can all learn from each other, I just think it's great. And, and so I was excited to be invited to do this. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye now.